When I was 14 years old, my dad bought a video player. He brought it home, and I was amazed. There was my favorite film locked in a little box, like this, a VHS tape. It was incredible. I brought it to school, I showed it to my friends, and they were equally amazed. They have never seen anything like it. Because back in 1989, in Poland, this was a piece of advanced technology. This was the future. Today, my son is 14. And if he brought that to school, his friends would probably also see it for the very first time, but for a different reason. For them, this is a piece of ancient history. And I like to think that I'm not that old. But this is how quickly the technological developments go. And since then, the digital transformation kept accelerating. I bet that every single one of you today has got this on you, a smartphone. We cannot imagine life without it. We have lost capacity to move around without navigation. We cannot imagine that we would not be able to check through social media what others are doing at any time of the day and night. Our kids have no idea how we were doing research, writing our thesis without internet, or how the world could even exist without its online dimension. And still, my generation, and I'm not that old, has known the world without the World Wide Web. Today, in less than 30 years, the world has undergone a true digital revolution. Our smartphones are a thousand times more powerful than the first supercomputers back in the 80s and 90s, including those that were sending people on the moon. In fact, our smartphones are tiny supercomputers that are using the most advanced technologies for our personal use to enable us accessing and sharing data. And in those 30 years, the world as we knew it has acquired a new, completely full dimension, a digital dimension. And we all live in those two dimensions. But the two dimensions do not always match. The pandemic has offered an unprecedented, the biggest global digital social experiment. It has shown us amazing opportunities that the online world is offering. When from one day to the other, we went online to do everything we had done before in the real world. So we were studying, working, connecting with others, 100% in digital. But it has also exacerbated issues that the online world brings with it. Issues such as safe connectivity, such as protection of data, such as protection of minors online. And we have realized, stronger than ever, that the rules and the values that we have been building in the European Union for decades are not always the same, are not always respected in the online dimension. It is increasingly not the states, not the governments, not the democracies, but big digital private companies that decide the rules of the game.
They give us access to the world of wonders online in exchange for data we produce, leaving digital traces everywhere. On top of that, not everyone has got the same access to this world of wonders. Some lack skills, others lack access to connectivity. So the digital divide keeps growing. And this was the moment for Europe to act, to make sure that the two dimensions be brought in line and that nobody is left behind. Because right now is the moment when our digital future, actually the future of the whole humanity, is shaping up. And we want to be the ones to shape it. This is the objective of the European strategy for the digital decade that we live in. To shape Europe's digital future around people, individuals and businesses. To make sure that our values are fully respected also in the online dimension. And that all member states manage to keep up with the pace of the digital transformation. We want to empower people. We want to empower you to be in control of your data and of your life online. So that when you are online, you will always know who is behind the post or an information. When you shop online, you will know everything about the product and the seller. And if you are scammed, you will have an easy way to denounce it, and the platforms will have an obligation to follow up. The photos you post online today are probably stored somewhere overseas. Tomorrow, they will be stored safely in the cloud in the EU, fully protected. You will be in control of your data and of your digital life. And this is what differentiates Europe from all the other parts of the world. In the digital transformation in Europe, people come first. The European Commission has been measuring the pace of digital transformation in Europe since 2015. We have set up a Digital Economy and Society Index, the so-called DESI which allows us to measure how member states are doing. We matched it against the world economies, uh, technological and digital developments, and we have now come up with a digital compass, a way to make sure that we find synergies across Europe and that we all advance in the same direction. We identified four axes of the Compass to work together with the Member States on the digital transformation. The skills, the infrastructures, the public services, and the businesses. So for the skills in 2030, which is our horizon, we want in Europe to have 20 million of ICT specialists, with more women in digital. And we want 80% of people in Europe to have at least basic digital skills. We want to have sustainable and secure infrastructure in order to bring fast connectivity to everyone, anywhere they live in Europe in order for them to make the best of the data, doing the developments in 5G and cloud and in supercomputing. We want to make 100% of key public services accessible to everyone online, including e-health and digital identity. We want 75% of EU companies to make the best of artificial intelligence, of, art, of 
big data and of cloud for their businesses. We want to make sure that small and medium enterprises boost their digitalization level and that we create a positive environment for startups and spin-offs and scale-ups in order to double the EU unicorns by 2030 in Europe. And all this, we want to do it in full respect of our values, such as non-discrimination, sustainability, inclusivity, protection of data, protection of minors online, and this is just to name the few. Because this is how we want to put people at the heart of the digital transformation in Europe. And all these are not just plans, hopes, words. We are actually well advanced on the path that we are indicated. Last year, the European Commission has proposed the first ever regulation of artificial intelligence. We have identified risk uses and the uses that will be absolutely banned in Europe. Last week, the three EU co-legislators have approved the first ever regulation of the digital platforms, the Digital Services Act, the so-called DSA, which will bring fair, fair and inclusive internet to everyone, for the businesses and for the citizens in the respect of the freedoms of our internal market. This act is adding to an already approved Digital Markets Act, the regulation of the big platforms that puts responsibilities of them and limits their powers so that, again, people and businesses are empowered online. To this, we work with the member states on cybersecurity of the networks, we invest in high-speed connectivity and in cloud in order to make the best of the data economy today. And we invest in microelectronics, in chips, in order to be less dependent on other parts of the world. We work on digital European identity to allow the Europeans to make the best of the services online and we work on safer internet for kids. And again, these are only examples that compose a big vision of Europe for the digital decade. So the digital transformation goes fast, but we are on it. We are determined to shape it ourselves and not be swallowed by it. We are convinced that we can make Europe the best place to live in the digital era, and that other parts of the world will follow us, like they already did for the personal data protection. But this is not something that only institutions or governments can do. Every one of us has got a role to play. So, get informed. Stay vigilant, be responsible, respect the values that we respect offline, and use the rights you have already as a European online. The European digital decade belongs to us. Let's shape it together. <laughs>